Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to Dr. Azma and to all my friends. So today we are from Group 5. We'll present about our topic which is uh, Ethic Initiative in Malaysia, Malaysia Zero Corruption Initiative. So let me begin with the definition of ethics, uh, initiative and corruption first. So ethics uh, according to Aristotle is a build that people should achieve uh, an excellent character for attaining uh, happiness or well-being. Uh, next, initiatives are defined as a start-up effort uh, which emphasizes uh, the importance of an action or first move uh, as a preventive measure against the issue. Next, uh, corruption. Corruption is any actions and deeds uh, that affect uh, integrity, moral dignity or moral principles. So, what's the incident? The incident is about uh, the three charges of asserting bribes have been filed uh, to a civil servant. So this incident is uh, happened about two years ago at a bank in Simpang Lenggam. So the accused uh, is an assistant officer at the Johor Islamic Religious Department. So to be conclude, the first charge, second charge and third charge is all about receiving money to recommend the supplier's company to get the job. So from this incident, what initiative need to be taken by national government in order to handle the ethical issues such as corruption? Okay, Assalamualaikum, my name is Noah Kedos. Okay, today I want to explain about the Malaysia Institute of Integrity, also known as IIM. The function of IIM is to responsible for developing the competency and capacity of all public and private sector in the aspect of governance, integrity and anti-corruption through percentage service instrument and training program. And IIM was established as the coordinating and monitoring agency for the implementation of the PIM with the objective of developing a nation with integrity, resilience and embracing investor value. Uh, the program that has been launched in is the National Integrity Day which was announced on 5 November 2005. The program seeks to cultivate integrity, cultivate universal value and strength governance in society. Okay, for integration of national institutes of integrity to public sector are able to create an efficient administration and public service and discipline through the application of noble value that can overcome problems and weakness in various aspects of governance, such as financial management, handling disciplinary case, corruption and abuse of power. Next is the Anti-Corruption Committee. Uh, there are three functions of this NGC. The first is the increase the government's commitment to cover all sectors in the fight against corruption. Second function is generating synergies in ensuring that the government administration system can be mobilized in an environment of zero tolerance for corruption. And the last function is Strengthen the quality of the government service delivery system based on the principles of transparency, accountability and competitiveness. The next is the impact of anti-corruption committee. The first is strengthening governance and integrity. Identify appropriate issues and actions to, stre to strengthen aspect of governance and integrity through initiative to prevent, promote and cultivate governance and institutional integrity in a planned manner to prevent breach of integrity, corruption, the abuse of power, malpractice and weakness of governance. The next impact is detection, compliance, punitive and recovery. Taking appropriate action against any form of misconduct or crime committed by members of the organization and external parties who have an interest in the organization. The last impact of anti-corruption committee is systems and procedures. Identify and study weakness or need of systems and work procedures of ministries, departments and agencies that are outdated or too complicated to cause various bureaucracy weaken administration, injustice and open opportunities for corruption, malpractice and abuse of power. Next, I would like to present about uh, another ethic initiative that has been implemented by the Malaysian government that is the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Act 2009. The function is to promote the integrity and accountability of the public and the private sector administration 
Secondly, is to educate the public authorities, public officials, and the members of the public about the corruption and its detrimental effect on the public and private sector administration. The implication of National Anti-Corruption Commission Act 2009 is to be able to increase the effectiveness and efficiency in anti-corruption effort as well as improve the perception of independence and transparency of the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission in the fight against the corruption. Last but not least, all practice, system, and procedure of the public bodies can be scrutinized by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission to facilitate the discovery of offense under this act that lead to corruption. For the next initiative is uh, former Prime Minister of Malaysia, Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, suggested uh, that a special court for corruption uh, to be set up to ensure that the corruption related cases are given priority and emphasized. The Cabinet Special Committee on Anti-Corruption which uh, may decide on the proposal to set up the special court following the trial of corruption cases being considered as a normal trial without being given any priority. However, the establishment of the special court requires some laws to be enacted as it is said to change the normal nature of court. So the Prime Minister said that the special court will not affect the ordinary court. However, uh, it will still refining the proposal as there were currently three layers of court. So uh, if we introduce a special court for corruption, uh, for the regular appeals will be submitted uh, to the court of appeal and then to the federal court. So for the implication of this initiative is uh, it can resolve uh, the cases of corruption offense faster and smoother uh, without having to wait for a long queue. However, this initiative is still in discussion and not been established yet. There are three actors that are involved in this incident. The first one is the civil servant, which is Nur Hazlim. The second one is the supplier, which is unknown. The last one is uh, MACC prosecuting officer, which is Nur Mahira Muhammad Fauzi. In conclusion, the corruption and ethics are interrelated. This is because the practice of corruption itself is an unethical offense. From all the ethics initiatives, above shows that national government is very serious in tackling this issue. Therefore, it is very important for every initiative undertaken by national government to achieve its goal as a preventive measure against ethical issues such as corruption.